So Moxie comes out as his whole entrance. Punk comes out as his whole entrance, and they start to wrestle. We, we get two minutes of a pay-per-view quality main event, super intense fight, and then <laughs> it's funny the way this went down because we talked about this. CM Punk has a lot of things going for him, but he's not a particularly gifted athlete. He's always done these high kicks, and they always work, but not really pretty. I swear to the God above, he had the prettiest high kick of his entire career in the spot where he went down screaming and something his foot. It was such. It was so graceful. It was so elegant. It's so graceful and elegant that he threw a kick with his right, his right leg, and then grabbed his left ankle. That's well, his plant foot. Yes, that's what it was. It yeah. was his the the planted foot is the one that went out, but. I don't think any of the announcers noticed that because they were all talking about how he hit him in the head with the instep, and now he's grabbing his instep. So, oh, I so the announcers that. thought that he had hurt the foot that he kicked with. I see. But in fact, he hurt the foot that was planted. Yes. Yes. Well, regardless, he went down, and uh, the ref actually teased a stoppage right there, but Punk kind of stumbled to his feet, and Mox pounced, hit a big-ass lariat, hit a bunch of elbows, hit a footlock. Hit one Death Rider, knew it was done, basked in the moment for a moment, hit a second Death Rider, and pinned him. This was a a like a two minute UFC main event where you know anything can happen at any time, and one mistake, one slip up, one twist of fate can screw you. And that's exactly what happened to Punk here. So no bullshit. Moxley bent, pinned him. Moxley beat him. John Moxley is the undisputed AEW World Heavyweight Champion. And there was a long, long post-match, a little to sink in. Punk's helped out of the ring. Moxie's celebrating. And this all makes sense because clearly they didn't expect the world title match to go three minutes. So they had a lot of TV time to kill. So while this is going on, I happened to look up. I I, I knew I, Punk was not undefeated. I, I couldn't remember who beat him in AEW. It was MJF, of course. So uh, Punk's last three losses are this match to John Moxley, the match to MJF, and then... Of all things, the, his last loss before coming to AEW was a trios match where Punk and the New Age Outlaws lost to John Moxley and the Shield. Wow. Moxley's got his number. Moxley has his number. Yeah. I thought this whole thing was just great. And I saw a lot of criticism. Although not... A, I, I, let me put it this way. You know, the, the people that really are angry are the loudest. So, you know, I heard criticism about this. But it feels like most people that watch this really enjoyed it. But the the criticism I saw, you know, it was it was too short. Uh, we were promised something long, which they weren't. Uh, the, it would have been better in the main event slot. Here's the deal. If you're going to put it in the main event slot, then these guys have to come out at 9.55. It's a three-minute match. So the idea was you put it at the top of the hour. You tease it's going to go long. You say publicly we're going to give them all the time they need and we'll give the tag match all the time that it needs and then it happens to go short and the story obviously is that moxley has been unstoppable since winning that interim title cm punk shattered his foot six weeks ago and he wasn't ready to come back and he threw the kick he hurt the foot he wasn't ready moxley capitalized and he beat him and the likely follow-up is Punk is going to have to walk it off, tape it up, crawl his way on one leg into his hometown at All Out, and see if he can find a way to beat John Moxley. And as a story, I find this far superior to CM Punk breaks his foot, his first match back is All Out, he beats John Moxley. I mean, that's fine. I'm sure the match would have been good and everything like that. But this is a way more exciting story. And people that are critical of this, you know what was one of the most famous WWE matches of the last 10 years? Goldberg and Brock Lesnar hmm. at Survivor Series, which, by the way, was a main event. That was a pay-per-view match. This is just a TV show. But it was the exact same thing. Nobody expected it. For a lot of reasons, because everybody thought Goldberg just had the one the one match deal, and then he showed up, and Vince thought he had a great idea. I think Paul might have talked him into it, but you know they they did this shocking finish that nobody saw coming in a boom. It was like a minute, yeah, and it was awesome, and that's what this was, and it did not hurt Goldberg. It did not hurt Brock Lesnar. The fucking rematch at WrestleMania was unbelievable. 
Remember that match? Oh, I do. And they might even have done another one in between. I can't remember, but I just remember. I remember the first one, and I remember the WrestleMania match because they were just so awesome. But it's you got to do this every now and then. You know, they they would do this in in all Japan. They had all of these you know thirty forty minute matches back in the day, and you know every now and then there would be a very very quick finish to condition you the fans to not fall asleep for twenty five minutes because this finish could happen at any time. It made sense in storyline. It made for a better story leading into their next match. I thought this whole thing was great. And the fans in the building, they did not turn on this at all. Now, they did turn on CM Punk. But we were in Cleveland. Mm -hmm. And uh, they will not turn on CM Punk. In Chicago. In Chicago. No. (laughs) But I would like to say one last thing here. And that is that I watched this. And I watched fucking John Moxley. I watched him, in the words of... Uh, Jim Ross, he whipped his ass. Oh, yeah. And he's fucking celebrating. These people are going crazy for this guy. He's got both of his belts. He's flipping off the world. He's walking to the back. People are mobbing. These kids are running up trying to touch John Moxley. I'm watching this thing, and you know what? If their plan is to do this tonight, and then Punk beats him in Chicago, it's going to work in Chicago because it's Chicago and it's CM Punk. But I can very easily see... A big punk backlash starting the following dynamite from people that think this Moxley is the best Moxley ever and angry that he got beaten. Which, of course, I've thought for a long time, MJF and punk is coming up next. Mm-hmm. And so there's if that happens, there's two options. Either MJF has to be the baby face no. and punk turns heel, which I don't think it's time for that. Or MJF is the heel, and there's a possibility of a punk backlash, and so you have a really awkward feud. So I'm fascinated by what they did, and I'm intrigued by what they're going to do it all out, and I'm intrigued by what the fallout of that is going to be and what's next. I thought this was awesome. Tony Schiavone interviews Christian Cage, says Jungle Boy has challenged you for a match at All Out. Christian says he extended an olive branch to Jungle Boy, offered him... A chance to apologize. Yes, it's true. He says, I did say some terrible things about you, but it was tough love. I was trying to motivate you. But Jungle Boy thinks he's smart. You'll never be as smart as Christian Cage. You have the audacity to challenge me to a match it all out. You'll never be in my league. I accept your challenge. He leaves. Ricky Starks does this promo. Yes. God damn what a promo this guy is. Yeah, is it great? Holy smokes. He says he lost his title. A lot of bad things have happened to him. He lost the FTW title. Team Taz broke up. And Hobbs, powerhouse Hobbs, turns his back on him. All these, the, the veterans in the back tell me this is show business. It's not friends business. I thought I was the exception. I thought I had a friend. When I broke my neck last year, Hobbs is the one checking on me every week. to Make sure I was feeling okay and my spirits were up. But people may want to see you do good, but they don't want to see you do better than them. Hobbs, you were standing around Jacksonville in a bedazzled shirt playing Britt Baker security guard when I grabbed you and pulled you into the spotlight. And then you hit me in the neck and you knew I got a bad neck. You knew I was close to losing all this again. I called you my friend. Now I call you a snake. And where I come from, we cut the heads off snakes. Bring your $5 ass to Chicago and fight me it all out. Ricky Starks is great, everyone. Dude, Ricky Starks, powerhouse Hobbs, love the team. Bro, I love this way more. Hmm. Hobbs has been the best fucking Hobbs, Hobbs awesome, yeah. since they broke up. Starks has been the greatest baby face. They get no time. It's like Ever. they're doing this, but you know Hobbs gets a short backstage thing last week. Starks gets a quick promo, and they're moving on to the next thing. I hope they get time at this pay-per-view. I hope they tear it up, and I hope they do something with these guys because they're great. Oh, they've... they've- their last matches as a team were given plenty of time. The, the, the two, I think they're both on paper. The triple threat tag, triple threat tag title matches, both of them. But yes. Moxley does a celebration promo. Have we mentioned this guy's the best? Well, you know what? We can always do it again. Is this, is John Moxley in the Hall of Awesome? You know what's special about the Hall of Awesome, everybody? What's that? You can be inducted multiple times. That's true. Therefore, mm-hmm. I think we can all agree. Oh, my God. Entering the prestigious Brian and Vinny Hall of Awesome, the Matt Cleary Memorial Hall of Awesome, 
is John Moxley. Amen. Congratulations. Amen. Because God damn, he's been awesome lately. Dude, this promo was fucking great. This was when I realized, bro, you're gonna beat this. You're gonna beat this bloke. Well, have fun. And we'll see. Stranger things have happened. So Moxley does his promo. I'm sorry, he says, was that not what's supposed to happen? Best in the world, my ass, he says. All the people who buried me as soon as Punk came back, they don't matter. Any problem you have, the answer is always John Moxley. Nobody but I can do. Nobody can do what I can do. I am the guy in this industry. There's no limitations on what I can do. When is my time? My time is now. My time is right. God damn now. Moxley rules. Stranger yeah. things have happened, Vinny. Yeah. But it's Chicago. Mm -hmm. And if you're going to beat Punk in Chicago, you may as well have done what they did here in Chicago. I, uh, I, I don't know if he's... I don't think Moxley's doing this twice. I would love if he did it twice. Well, you mentioned MJF. Well, yeah. MJF may have something to do with this. I guess that's possible. Yeah. But I, I see them... They've already feuded without the title. So the next feud, it only makes sense. If you're going to do it again, it should be over the title. But, but MJF vowed to come back and ruin Punk's... His, his, Take what uh, he said he was going to give his most humiliating defeat. Thank you. Yes, but this would not be more humiliating than when MJF himself uh, defeated him. I guess so. This is how the show begins. Really, Oscar does a back kick, camera cut. She does a back fist, camera cut. She starts to run, camera cut. She gets a hip attack, camera cut. She drops to her knees, camera cut. She throws a kick, camera cut. She stands up and screams, camera cut to people brawling on the floor. I was furious. Do you understand? I wanted to shut the show off and not watch anymore. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.